Hello, good evening. This is The Late Show. We have a few technical problems, but the show must go on. And I just want to welcome you uh, to the programme. Uh, Timothy Vince is with There's no me. business like no show business. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Uh, a vote of confidence there. At least we're not showing all our wares and tears behind the green screen that we have mm. tonight. Really? Yeah, it was just everything froze, you know. So it's you and me, Tim. And it happened within a minute of us going on air. Literally. So there it is. Anyway, I'll start with scripture. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I mean, it's just a little bit of ad hoc, um, looking at Micah chapter 4. And it will come about in the last days, okay, the last days, that the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains. So this is Mount uh, Zion or mm. Mount... I was looking at you, Mount... What's the other oh, name? Are you looking at me? Yeah, yes. No, I'm, I'm trying to find where your verse is. Um, Chapter 4. Come, okay. let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Is that the one? Yeah. So it, this it will is teach us his ways. Mount Moriah. So I, was, I was waiting for you to... walk in his paths. Yeah. yeah. So we're talking about Mount Zion as well. It's yeah. the same thing. Uh, would it be established? Okay. Um, and it will be raised above the hills, um, which yeah. it is. And the people will stream to it. That's interesting, isn't it? We know that this is one of many prophecies in, in the, all the minor prophets as well as the whole Bible. But the interesting thing is that all the peoples will stream to it. That ties in with Isaiah chapter 19. Correct. Okay. So many nations will come and say, come, let's go up to the mountain of the Lord. Well, hang on a sec. That's a little bit different to what they've done or what they're doing today. They want to go up to the mountain of the Lord. Why? It says, come up uh, to the house of the God of Jacob. Okay, this is establishing the lineage. What, yeah. Who was it that got the Mount Moriah in the first place? It wasn't the Muslims, okay? Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, the God of Isaac and Jacob. Right. And it says that I may teach him about the ways, okay? And that he must walk in the paths and from Zion. Mind you, that's a yeah. dirty word out there, but it's a yeah. beautiful place, Mount Zion. That's right. Okay? And I will go forth, it will go forth... Uh, the, uh, the law will go forth from there, yeah. and even the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So that's like a match to what's in Isaiah 2 as well. Okay. It's pretty decisive, isn't it? You know, this is the wonderful thing. You and I, and most of our viewers, actually do know that all of the scriptures tie in with each other. They dovetail together, and it's almost as it's written by one person. But So who was it written by? Almost as though... Well, it's the Holy Spirit, exactly. it's God's Word. And uh, did we ever look at that amazing um, cross-referencing chart that shows how all the scriptures... I haven't seen that for a long, so long time. Isn't it spectacular? Yeah. Yes, where they all cross-reference to each other and they're all from different books, different periods of time um, and different characters, if you want to call them yeah. that, yeah. in the lineage all the way back to, um, well, and Adam The great and Eve. thing is, Howard, that I prepared to do Micah 6, uh, but you're reading from Micah 4, and we can pick up from any scripture. Yeah. Because they do all interlink. They all are relevant to yeah. us. And this is as relevant to us as Micah yeah. 6 is. I mean, if you're a master craftsman, mm. you would have things dovetail, like That's if right. you're a carpenter, yeah. okay? Or if you're a stonemason. Do, you know do you know the perfect dovetail? Because I, I do a lot of carpentry. I love it so mm -hmm. much and did it at school more than lessons, other lessons. Um, the perfect um, gradient for a dovetail joint is one in seven. So... No, the number seven, so you know what okay, I mean? Okay, yeah. That's what I just thought. It's so significant, the number seven. Is that, if you had that as an angle, it, wh yeah. what would it look like? If you used both hands, where, was, where would the dovetail well, rough, be? Roughly, if I, I can't easily stretch this finger, but rough, roughly, if you're, if you're doing the angle, let's say that's about... So in other words, it comes out one and it goes down seven. So whether it's millimetres or centimetres or whatever size of dovetail. I see. So you're going to have, you're going to have one side and you cut, because I've done them by hand, you know, with so a So if you're putting sword. two planks of wood together and you want it to be one, but you dovetail it so it'd be you something can. like that. You can do that. Normally you have a kind, I can't, my hands aren't in great shape, but you, that, that is the dovetail joint and it locks it, it locks it in. Now, you could do that as a stonemason as well, you, in the, with uh, the totally, temple? Yeah, totally. Yeah, it, it all locks together. It yeah. dovetails. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and so does the scriptures dovetail exactly. as well. Yeah. Um, there's just about every page I look at in my Bible. I've got three of these Bibles on the go, but they're all, some are in better state than others. But forgive me if they're just falling apart a bit. But 
they, those scriptures to the uninitiated, will, they would seem disjointed. Yeah. Or they might even seem ugly. Yeah. And there's others who would see them as beautiful. Yeah. And uh, as if that was something that the Holy Spirit, they would recognize, as the scriptures themselves say, their interpretation isn't for men and, or mankind as such. It's for the Holy Spirit to guide you through to get the meaning of what those scriptures were, were meant to be when they were beautifully carved um, and written in it's parchment. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it is an, a great story, the story of the Bible. And if ever we could do a trip to the Museum of the Bible in Washington, it's absolutely worthwhile. It just okay. traces the whole story of the Bible and there was a family called the Green family uh, who owned Hobby Lobby, which is a big chain of, of, of DIY shops, while we're talking DIY, across America, made billions. Um, he put in something like 600 million, as long as matched funding. So the rest was raised from, mainly from the US. So it's about a 1.2 billion museum, all privately funded that honors the Bible, and it really does a good job. Look, comes right up to the modern age culturally, but it talks about the history of translations, of missionary endeavor. Mm. Uh, but if you go further back, it's literally showing where archeology span fits in with the scriptures. Uh, we've got in the and British Museum quite yeah. a lot, but it's got it all together in one museum. Okay. It's wonderful. I can, I can only think of one a historian that was, uh, if you like, um, separate, wasn't, supposedly wouldn't have had a, a vested interest in interpreting what was going on at the times, and that would have been uh, the historian Josephus. Josephus, yeah. Were in there any times, others? Yeah. Well, in modern times, we've got a chap called Tom Holland, who's pretty well, as a historian, come round to absolutely be in awe of the Bible mm. and, and, and how, how it is just such a remarkable book. He doesn't come out and say he's a Christian, um, but I often wonder whether, you know, people do that professionally because they, it wouldn't help their career, as yeah. it were. But, <laughs> but he's professionally days. saying, look, mm. it's, it's a remarkable um, well, record. Let, let me just ask um, our producer, because we do have technical problems. We had everything all uh, set to share with you, the King's speech today, yeah. um, but unless uh, our technical Oh, we're scrapping the, the Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, so... So we're, we're, we're right. in it now. We're winging it. Up to our next. Yes. That's what Gregory Peck said to David Niven in The Guns of Navarone. <laughs> yes. When David Niven wanted to pull out, and he said, you're in it now, right up to your neck. Okay. Is that where the guns were peeking out the top of a mountain, wasn't That's it? Exactly. And the, that belonged to the Germans, and they had to get in there somehow. The Greek island, yeah, and, right. and the British ships had to get through whatever this strait was, mm. and so they had to... They had to tip those guns out of, the, right. out of the window. Well, as we can't share what we plan to do, um, unless it comes back to life, we will do that later. But let me pose a question, and you can do the same to our viewers. What scriptures in your mind um, dovetail together that are from one part of the Bible to the other and carry or confirm what the former one was saying um, and especially if it was prophetic in nature. Um, I, I'd like to say as well that live at revelationtv.com is open. There are things which hopefully will come out tonight. You know, you, you've got to go along with the Holy Spirit. I s said to Je Nathan, uh, the producer, I said, don't panic. We don't need, we just we'll go with the flow. Go Whatever with happens. Can I know. jump in? Yeah. Before the, uh, the viewers, before you write in and, and sort of supersede everything I've said. Um, the Lamb of God the Passover lamb that's there in this historic account of the children of Israel being delivered from Pharaoh. They put the blood of the lamb over the lintel and the doorposts. And then we have it again where John the Baptist sees Jesus for the first time and he says, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And then you come into Revelation don't know what kind of multiple dovetail joint it is. Uh, chapter five, who's worthy to open the scroll? By the way, the scroll of judgment. Um, and then behold, I saw um, a lamb. And, was it <laughs> that, a lamb? Wasn't that it had an angel? been slain. Right. Look, uh, uh, that was the lion of Judah. 
it's, so you've there got the sweep of the whole Bible where this symbol of a lamb that's all powerful and all conquering is, is there. And it defeats death as the angel of death in Egypt. It defeats death on the cross. And, and there it is at the okay, end of the Okay, let me age. ask you a question, sir. Mm. Why was it that the Lord chose the lamb to be sacrificed rather than the goat? So the lamb was um, just a symbol of perfection and it had to be spotless. The goat was more a symbol of, you know, a bit, have you ever seen goats? You know, they are absolutely crackpot. Yeah. I've, I've seen goats, you know, where <laughs> they move It's not that, head. I think um, <clears throat> the connotations or maybe the things that I've got in my mind yeah. because of knowing too much scripture, over the yeah. time is that you've got the separation at the time of sheep the end of the goats. sheep and the goats. That's right. The goat like people are, are the ones that won't inherit the kingdom of God and are judged accordingly yeah. and they want and have not accepted the sacrifice of the lamb uh, whether figuratively or in reality that which Jesus laid down his life for us uh, said John 3 16 the famous one yeah you know. By the way Howard it, that that scripture behold the lamb of God it was on a banner at the a Billy Graham rally in 1984, Ashton Gate. And um, a friend of mine from my, uh, my college where I was doing woodwork and design, he came up to you, he was a mature student, but he came genuinely up to you because he knew I was a Christian. And he said, yeah, I saw this on the TV, this banner that said, behold the Lamb of God, who taketh away worries. the sin of the world. Yeah. And you know, at that moment in time, I was completely stumped <laughs> to answer him. And I feel, I still feel terrible that Trevor, who came up to me after a Billy Graham rally to ask, you know, honestly ask, he wasn't taking the mick. And I, and I just, so important for us oh. to be ready to answer. Mm. I'm still trying to catch up on that failing. Right. I may as, may as well read out uh, the scripture there from John 3.16. Yeah. Whomsoever believes in Christ, really, That's basically, right. um, and accepts him, uh, he will have everlasting yeah. life. So uh, there are so many people that don't accept Christ as even being a historical person, let alone being the Son of God uh, and the one who offered up himself. Yeah. You know, uh, the likes of the Richard Dawkins and things would say, isn't it terrible? The, the, a uh, God would send his son to be sacrificed. You know, he always looks at the negative side, bless him. Uh, but, you know, it, it was something I can imagine, the way I, uh, knowing what I do about the character of Jesus, he willingly offered himself. That's right. Even yeah. though at that moment in Gethsemane, he did panic a little. So that dovetails, by the way, Howard, with, you've mentioned Mount Moriah there in Micah for. Abraham and Isaac, Mount Moriah. Yes, explain to the viewers and what happened there. So, so you, so you have uh, Abraham being tested. Let's be mm. honest, his faith was being tested. Go, Abraham, go and take your son up to the, the top first of and Mount only Moriah. Yeah, go on. Son. First he and was only his firstborn son. To, to, to his wife. Correct. So, so that's a big one, actually, because in Genesis 12, I think it is, or 15, um, that God promises to Abraham and his seed, which means his firstborn, um, that he'll become the father of many nations. In fact, it took him a very long time, didn't it, to get to get, to get there? To I mean, Sarah Ishmael was part, and then Isaac. Yeah, but also uh, Sarah was beyond childbearing. That was age, the point. You know, and she, and she laughed. She laughed, and the angel of the Lord. Oh, it's just fascinating. Wherever yeah. you know, you could talk about this. Sorry, we could just. But we're in the dovetail, so we don't want to lose. The yeah. Dovetail. Okay. Come on then. So the dovetail is mm. that. Abraham was instructed to go up, and by the way, Richard Dawkins and others say, "How? Oh, well, this is all child sacrifice, and you know why was he taking his son?" Well, Isaac was a grown man; he could have overpowered his elderly father. Yes, he let him do. As in the film yeah. Gladiator, when you know Richard Harris was overcome by his you know yeah. son, and you know, this, uh, he murdered. Um, he could have overpowered his father, uh, uh, but what happens is they're carrying all of the material. Uh, for the fire, for the sacrifice on the top of Mount Moriah. And Isaac says, well, we've got everything. Where's the, the sacrifice? Where's the sacrifice? Where? And Abraham says, 
well, God will provide the sacrifice. And they turned around and there was a ram caught yeah. in a thicket. Uh, the moral of the story being that God did provide the sacrifice and there was never uh, any intention uh, of, from God uh, that Abraham would sacrifice his son Isaac, mm. but he was being tested. Does he believe God's promise that he would be the father of many nations through Sarah? Um, he overcame, he, sorry, what's the word? He passed that test. Mm. The fascinating thing for me is that Abraham sojourned from Pandamaram in northern yeah. Iraq, all the way through probably Syria to get down through what would be Lebanon maybe today, or even Syria at least, and then come down to the valley uh, to where um, the promised land was going to be. But he goes past it, but en route, yes. en route, he at least does stop at Mount Moriah, which is Mount Zion. That's right. I mean, what is the chances of that? And that was obviously before there was a Jerusalem, of course. So, but how, why was that significant? Well, the amazing thing is, now I, I've, I've not, uh, I've been in what they call the Dome of the Rock, but you know, the tradition goes right back to that being the rock where Abraham of had his son. set up the sacrifice and was, you know, he's, he's tying his son down. Mm. He trusted God to that extent. Yeah. Who would do that? Yeah. So his real demonstration of his total faith didn't waver in his faith. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's called the Dome of the Rock there because it's been claimed now by Islam uh, because they claim Abraham as their prophet. And Jesus, by the way, is one of their prophets. It's quite neat that you can claim everything mm. and, then, and then add a little bit more, add Muhammad to it. But anyway, that rock could be the rock where Abraham did was offering yeah. up to Isaac. It's a yeah. meteorite. I think, I think I'm right in saying. Yeah. Amazing. It is. And then it turns into the threshing floor of, um, what's his name? Aruvna, uh, the yeah, prophet. Yeah. Um, now, the other interesting thing is that, yeah, Abraham, um, you know, set up camp, I think, down in Hebron. And, well, she Shechem. Shechem, and then, yeah. And then Hebron. Um, but it was only after uh, Isaac and Jacob and Jacob's sons being into, exiled into Egypt because of food. Uh, then all of the um, slavery in Egypt, it was ma many hundreds of years later before they came back to this same very place that was promised. Yeah. Uh, Are you Abraham. talking about the 400 year period when they were in exile? But I was thinking yeah. about the time Abraham went down with, uh, with his uh, nephew Lot, who went into Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. And, but just not so far I'm from just dove trying to dovetail. Right. So I was just dovetailing just <coughs> between you know, a few chapters of the Bible, actually, yeah. that where you know, that promise and the promised land promise, and this land will be given to you, um, wasn't really fulfilled in Abraham's day, but it was fulfilled, you know, a few generations later. Yeah. Well, quite a few generations yeah. later. But the, th but the fascinating thing is that he passed through that very spot. Correct. More, probably more than once or twice. That's right. Till he eventually um, came there and uh, resided there. I know you, he was Hebron and Shechem yeah. uh, were another place for him to yeah. reside. And wasn't his... And where he's buried. Yes. In, in Hebron. Hebron. But his wife is buried? Um, I think she's there. I, I, you've got me now. But I know that Jacob's wife, Rachel, is buried on the way to Bethlehem. You've got Rachel's yeah, tomb there. That's right. Um, yeah, so they weren't all, yeah. all buried there. But... Um, uh, yeah. Interesting how because of course she Joseph's bones got she died to go in back childbirth. There. Yeah, didn't yeah. she, Rachel? If I'm right. Yes, I think you're right. But in because, terms of because of the son that was born, yeah, was called um, Benjamin. Yeah, and his first name that was called was Benjamin or whatever it was was a, a, a because it was with pain she yeah. gave birth and she lost yes. her life. Did she not? Yeah. Um, Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of tragedy. viewers will probably know if there's anybody still watching. It's all interesting. And Abraham, of course, met Melchizedek, mm. which is a kind of like of, of the Christ Lord could yeah. actually. You yeah. know, the, the the sense is that it was the Lord. Yeah, you know this this Fascinating. king and this priest. Do we have any emails live at Revelation we have. TV? We, we have, we have, we have. Let's have a look. Thank you very much. Mm. Um, let's have a go at this one. Um, good evening. 
Tim and Howard, bless you and all your production team. God <laughs> is who All our production he team says is he one is. person. Exactly. But, Sorry, go on. Know. Made me laugh. Go on. Right. As Mrs. Thatcher said, we are a grandmother. <laughs> So what? So in other words, one, it's, the, the, one, one can things. be more than one. It's yeah. the royal we, isn't it? Bless you and all your production team. God is who he says he is. The disciples were confused as to why they could not release a certain person from an evil spirit. Jesus replied that only certain things can be done by prayer. Prayer is the act of Jesus' word. Let's stand on it. God bless you and all the team. Mm. Um, we demolish all arguments which the enemy placed in our path through prayer in the Holy Spirit. That's from Paul. a good one. Thank you. Uh, Les says, uh, Proverbs 29, 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Mm -hmm. But when the, the wicked, wicked rule, beareth rule, the people mourn. That's a really yeah. good one, Les. Next is from Deb. Uh, good evening, Howard and Tim. Regarding the Bible, can you explain the extraterrestrial contents of the Bible, hence its connection to the book of Enoch? Mm -hmm. That was banned from the Bible. Many blessings. Yeah. Deb. Have you read it? I, I haven't, but I do. I remember I hearing a long a time ago from Do Tony Pierce mm. that in Jude it says it talks about the prophet Enoch. Whereas in our Bible, we only have of Enoch, Enoch walked with God and was not. So there must be more to Enoch mm. for, 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 for Jude to write um, that. You know, Enoch was a prophet. Yeah, I th from memory, I think it's more tied up with the Nephilim, mm. um, and the, the time when the the, the giants, as it were, uh, were walking the earth. Yeah. And you might think, oh, well, that's ridiculous, um, but it's uh, what happened apparently, or uh, through that period of time, was the the fallen angels wanted to have uh, sexual relations uh, mm. with good-looking women. The, uh, of Adam's offspring, mm. obviously, and his wife. Um, so where did uh, uh, all that happen was uh, around, obviously after the time they were thrown out or banned uh, by the angel who was the swirling sword. So they couldn't take part of the tree of life, okay, because that was something which was, would have given them eternal life. So they were thrown out and then all this went on and then you had all of this like, um, it's a little bit mentioned in Genesis about definitely, and it was pre-flood. Yeah, and actually, it was it was one of the reasons why it had to be brought to an end, mm. because otherwise we would have the whole of the human seed, as it were, demonized. I mean, it's bad enough yeah. that we can be demonically, you know, oppressed. Uh, but in Jude verses fourteen, it says Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men. Um, you can talk, we can read about that earlier. Um, uh, see, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all the ungodly of the ungodly acts they have done in the ungodly way and of all the harsh words mm. ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Um, is there, is it, is it, yeah, in verse 6, did, you haven't read that yet. No, I haven't yet. Yet. Okay, let me read that as well. And the angels who did not keep their own domain, there you go, yeah. but abandoned their proper abode, he has kept the eternal bonds under darkness for the judgment uh, of the great day. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, since they are in the same way as though these indulged in gross immorality and went after strange flesh, are exhibited as an example, is undergoing the punishment of eternal life. Mm. Fire, sorry, eternal fire. Yet in the same way, these men also by dreaming defile the flesh and reject authority and revile angelic majesties. That's right, celestial beings. Yeah. yeah, so these celestial beings, and especially the ones that were demonic, right. had sexual intercourse with good-looking women uh, of the offspring of Adam and produced this uh, hybrid, That's call correct. it that, correct. Correct. of the Nephilim, as we're called. And they were giants of men. And as you said, that, that was another reason, possibly, yeah. that God brought an end to that at the, the time of the flood. Yeah. And uh, I think in that film called Noah, where you had Russell That's right. the Crow, Crow it, play it the was, part again, a bit it was, weird. It was a bit yeah. dark, yeah. Very dark it in that It's probably sense. accurate. But you've got the, the demonic uh, big creatures 
uh, which are roaming the earth. And this is what I think uh, goes into more detail yeah. in the apocryphal book. That's right. And, uh, you know, that film, I, th I think if I remember, you know, someone else jumped onto the ark as well. So it wasn't just Noah's family. Yeah. Which isn't... You know. It wasn't as, right, as was it? Lee yeah. Emmy would say, that's not biblical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Uh, but yes, uh, I, I, the reasons why the synod or whatever it was that got together at the, about the third century of the, the churchmen got together and decided what was to be included in the, uh, the books mm. that we have today known as the so Bible. You see, I take the position that God set it up. I, I actually believe that God who created the heavens and the earth, who's all-powerful, almighty, by the way, the King's speech, he says, almighty God, is easily powerful enough to preserve and convey his word to us today. So I actually believe God's hand was in those councils. Mm. I, don't, I don't just look at it in a humanistic way. Mm. But, you know, that, uh, th yeah. Otherwise, um, w if we're subject to man's, decisions, mm. it can go pear-shaped. Yeah. And, and then the other thing about all the apocryphal books is, um, I think it's good to, to be aware of everything, but we've got so much to be going on with yeah, I in mean, what's in the Bible. But there's nothing to stop people looking at them no. and making a judgment yourself. Yeah, that's right. I, it's not like, oh, we mustn't put this out sort of thing yeah. because it shows this or it contradicts this or contradicts that. In fact, it actually adds to uh, the Nephilim story or mm. account, I should yeah, say. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, if, if something's in the scriptures, so the problem with the Quran, let's say, is that they add elements to Jesus' life. For instance, um, they say that he, he, he turned a stone bird, I think, uh, and brought it back to life or the other way around. They say that Jesus didn't, didn't actually uh, die on the cross. He, he just swooned. You know, those, those sort of apocryphal things, let's say, which are in, the, in extra biblical writings, if it doesn't correlate to God's word, then you have to say, that. Yeah. I, I believe in the received, you know, as it were, text that God has conveyed to us. And, um, there's a lot of evidence that God's hand has been in the process of the translations and the conveyancing of the Bible. And there's a few errors <coughs> that, that man's sort of transcriptions and but, uh, brought in. But what I like about the, the fact is that unlike the Quran, yeah. uh, is that the, pe the, the, the translators of today's Bibles actually say, in this particular section of this book, this is disputed whether this was actually said and gives a reason and an understanding or it's another viewpoint that's, that's been right. added because it all depends the context more the position of where the person was standing and that's true rather than true. the story or that's account true. being inaccurate that's true just picking up on abraham again and we could pick up on anything really but the the um islam and the roman catholic church this be fair they 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 are taking something beyond what we have in the scriptures they've they've added um some scriptures uh but on the crucial point of abraham abraham believed god and it was credited to him as righteousness so the christian teaching is that we're saved by faith the islamic teaching and the roman catholic teaching um is that we're saved by faith to an extent and works right and that's a crucial difference that you slip into if you add to the scriptures mm. and of course in revelation it says don't add yeah or take away okay um having said and works well we know that the apostle james yeah okay did actually say show me your faith by that's your works that's right. In other words, if you're a lazy so-and-so... You're not saved by your works. Yeah. No, you're not saved That's by it, but show me them. Faith isn't real unless it's yeah. expressed in works or what we say, the fruit, yeah. the spirit, you know, some fruit. I mean, if there's no fruits, there's no tree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or you, if you haven't clocked in. <laughs> yeah. Ding. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, how do you know that you... Can you prove that you actually did a day's work? So yeah. you have faith. Your faith 
What's, how's the rest of that saying going? Um, well, it says, it's in Romans 4, and it says, um, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to, his, uh, to him that as one, righteousness. But I was thinking of James's one. Oh, yeah, we yeah. can read the James. Yeah, re re read it, because it actually is very clever, the way that it actually no, it's very, puts it, it is, around. It is, it is very good. But I, I don't take the view that it contradicts uh, Paul. Yeah, let's have a look at James 2. I've got a bit of a funny finger, so I'm trying to... Uh, okay. all, there we go, got it. Yeah. I'm falling apart. So James 2. Yeah. Um, uh, let me Verse just, 19, somewhere oh, like well that. Well done. Okay, let's well, go. Let's go from 17. Well done, okay. Mr. Producer. Where, where, where I, but my, again, my eyesight isn't so... I'll do it, isn't it? Oh, here, I've got it. Yeah. In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Of mm. course. Um, uh, but someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith uh, without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there is one God, good, but even the demons believe that and shudder. Now, what does um, that tell you? That, 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 that little bit there, to me... I'd like to pick up on the faith on, works You as go well, back though. to faith one. But no, uh, only... No, go on, you, you say okay. what that means, because well, it goes on. Well, the great thing is you could say, well, the demons believe in the scripture. That's it. But, you know, so it's not so, just believing. Correct. Or there's something to do. The faith is an extension further yep. than just believing. Yes. All right. Because okay. even believing, uh, people, there's so few people now who believe in the scriptures or believe in Jesus yeah. at all. So, they mock him. It's, I cannot exactly. believe what they're doing today. But by the way, we're getting on to another yeah. dovetail here uh, in James, we good? which dovetails with Abraham. So you foolish man, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our ancestor Abraham uh, considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? Um, you see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. Hmm. Um, it's so important. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness, righteousness. And he was called God's friend. So he's using exactly the same as Paul is using in Romans 4. They, they fit because he's saying, look, he, he believed and it was credited to him as righteousness. But in Romans, Paul says this, and it's very important, right at the beginning. He says, um, uh, right at the beginning, and I, because I memorize it as a whole chunk of scripture, he talks about the, um, uh, the obedience that comes from faith. Right. Now, this is crucial. What comes first? It is definitely, it's not a chicken and egg. Obedience? No. Nah. How about faith? It's the obedience that comes from faith. So Paul okay, is actually okay, saying, okay. look, obedience is deeds. Right. I want... I, I, I'm going to read it because I, right. otherwise I'll... I'm just I'll trying to put it in, in, into a personal yes, uh, situation. Sure. When I heard from the prophet that I was to go to Romania and, and I, I, because of the things that happened that day and he could only, God knew what was happening and he said something and I said, I'm going to go. The yeah. friends of whose church it was said, that's a man of God, he's a prophet. I said, I know. And then they said, you're not going, are you, to Romania? I said, you bet I'm going. The reason is, if it is of God, I don't want to miss it. But if it isn't, I said, I'll come back. It's only 5,000 miles away. So, um, so that's obedience. Exactly. So no, I might as well. But I had to believe first then. Howard. Everything, on. even what you're saying is dovetailing. Yeah. So Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, dovetailing, yeah. regarding his son, who as to his human nature was a descent of David, and who through the spirit of holiness has been declared with power to be the son of God by his resurrection from the dead, um, a, a Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and for his namesake, we receive grace and apostleship to call people from among all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from Faith, that comes from faith. So that's verse five. And you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. So you were called to go to uh, Romania. You believed that calling. You went to Romania. That was your deed. That showed your faith. Okay, so the faith didn't come first. I had faith that God, God was in control. That's it, the faith did come first. That's yeah. what I'm trying to oh, say. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a bit of dyslexia, yeah. um, but it's very important because it's all about actually 
uh, salvation by faith. But Paul yeah. sort of incrementally like, builds it up. I like the way it rounds off in verse 26 of chapter 2. It says uh, in verse 26, For just as the body without the spirit is dead, also faith without works is dead. So he's right. putting the two together here. Yeah. So were the Catholics then correct in a way that uh, salvation comes through both faith and works? Um, and no, because, the, because where then is boasting? Um, you know, it is excluded, Paul says in Romans 3. It goes, goes three chapters to hammer it home. Um, on what it's basis? Close, though, on that, on the basis of works, is it excluded? No, he says no, but on the basis of faith. Yeah, no, but I, the two work so close together. They do, but one is evidence of the other. So right. works is so evidence of faith. So they have to dovetail. Yes, totally. Okay. But if it's salvation by works, then no, Christianity is no different from any other religion. Yeah. Anywhere that's else. A, that that I agree with entirely, which is good, yeah. which is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great. So mm. yeah, what we'll do, Howard, on another Late Show is we'll just go through <laughs> Paul's journey, which I do believe, and connect it to James and yeah. say they, they fit. Yeah, but this is the whole thing in it here is just amazing. I don't know how people could say it's a book for fools or, you know, you don't believe in all that stuff. Oh, dear, am I tired of listening yeah. to LGBT. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's LBG. Oh, it's LBC. Like that. Yeah, Labour's Biggest Conversation. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so just while I've mentioned what I've mentioned, the first one I looked at, which isn't the first email that came in, I'll try and get the other ones in. Despite Pope John Paul II believing in the doctrine of purgatory and praying to the saints, this did not prevent Billy Graham from calling him the greatest Christian of the 20th century. That's from our friend Eddie. Eddie. <laughs> um, uh, Trump and the word of God. Uh, good evening, Howard and Tim. Regarding what happened to President Trump, here's what I came across regarding what happened biblically. In the Bible, um, the concept of uh, blood on the right ear serves as a visible mark of consecration, signifying that the person is dedicated to God's service and has been set apart for a specific purpose. This act represents a physical and spiritual uh, transformation, preparing the individual for their sacred role. That's in Leviticus 8. Wasn't quite on our theme, uh, Chris, but that's good. Very interesting. Very interesting. Actually, I, 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 I believe that God foreknows every event, and that's just one little millisecond of an event. Oh, right. Just think about that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, because um, if we say God's all powerful and all knowing, that's a big statement. Yeah. But the thing is, in, in all of that, though, God gets the butt end of it because they'll say, if He's all knowing and everything else, why do people suffer? Why does a child, a little child, have to suffer from cancer or being it's shot to knowing, death, but it doesn't mean blown up or starving yeah. or whatever? That's but good. what they don't realise is that the enemy, Satan, tries to get God a bad That's it. Press. tab. That's it. But also, um, it is all in Romans. It says God has bound all over to disobedience. He's allowed disobedience in order that he can have mercy. Romans 1. I, uh, well, that's Romans 1.1. 1, 1. That's Romans yeah. 11 as well. Yeah. Because, he, because he, he, he wants to uh, make it absolutely clear that it's not by our works. <laughs> Coming back to the same theme. It's in mm. Romans 11. It basically says, look, um, yeah, why is there all this disobedience? Why is there, you know, Satan, uh, sorry, not Satan, Pharaoh hardening his heart? It's so that God can show his mercy. And we can be clear that it is God's mercy and not our <laughs> Good works. But Pharaoh was drowned with all the others. Wasn't Absolutely. He? But it, it but it's it got a lot of, not a lot of mercy there. Yeah, no, it, there's a lot there's a lot of mercy actually, because in the sweep but, of history, um it, so he delivered the children of Israel and, and that um hardening of Pharaoh's heart was was Pharaoh's hardness of heart. I mean, he, I will not let your people go. I will not. Let. God says, let my people go. He says, no, I won't do it. And then even after he did a, an agreement with Moses that he'd let the people go, what did he do? He chased them down into the sea. But and doesn't God delivered that them. then set... He ran into the sea. Right, but doesn't that actually give an example to those who fight against God and you know, think they're going to win? I mean, Pharaoh was so adamant, that's a good word, yeah. <laughs> that he was going to prevail. But yeah. God was so sure that he just drew him into the, yeah. almost into his own death trap. A absolutely. 
I, I think, um, yes, there's a people, lesson some there. people focus on, on God's judgments, but within God's judgment, there's God's mercy. Yeah, there's a, sorry. Did he orchestrate it or did he no. foreknow it? And I would say God he foreknew knew. it. Yeah. People say, well, why couldn't God intervene? Well, it's like back to the future. If you intervene in one little thing, it, you know, you're the going to have effect yeah. everywhere else. And you'll marry your, your aunt. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's true. You watched the film. Oh, yeah, yes, I you'll did. You'll be floating yeah. around on skateboards. Well, some people wheels. think I'm the dog. <laughs> <laughs> In Back to the Future. Okay, um, right. So very good. If, Read emails, some more yeah. emails. Uh, there are some. Um, Ernie says, as with Abraham's experience with Isaac, when we by faith do the same by sacrificing our flesh in favour of the Holy Spirit, is this comparable? Yes, it is. That's from Ernie and Margaret. I was going to say Ernie and Wise. Yeah. yeah. No, but um, um, sorry. Uh, Bridget says, "Good evening, men of God." Um, she calls herself. Greedy. Um, we are saved not by good works, but to good works. That's a good way. That's of an interesting way of putting it. That's yeah. a good way of putting it. I think good works is the produce of faith. Thank you. I've been right. saying that no, about I know, but times. I know, but I just. No. Yeah. But I just go for that scripture. Yeah. Whenever I'm looking opposite you, you know, yeah. uh, should I forgive my brother seven times? Yeah. No, seven times. Seven. Oh dear. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what keeps me going in these programs, Howard, while I'm looking at it. <laughs> um, so um, I see a dovetail, this is from Jean now, in Moses' face, shining so brightly that he had to veil it, and Jesus shining when he was transfigured, and Moses and Elijah appeared. Mm. You are absolutely right. Mm. Very good dovetail. Um, so Ken says, how about Romans 11, verses 5 and 6, chaps? Um, you can have a look at that while I read some more emails, shall I? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's go again, uh, which I've read. Um, uh, Susan writes, I don't understand how an angel, fallen or otherwise, can impregnate a woman as they are spiritual beings and sex less. Jesus said that there was no marriage in heaven, but the dead were like the angels, being neither male or female. Surely God is the only one with the ability to spiritually create a child in the womb. It troubles me to give fallen angels that power. I don't think it is possible Sorry, sorry for um, Does the uh, scripture anywhere use the term sons of God rather than angels? Great program as always. Yeah. Well, what we're trying to grapple with is what the scripture says. And that's the thing about the Nephilim. Mm. Um, but, uh, but what do you mean? Is there a reference to... Uh, well, to she's she's saying, the is there a reference? Where, where are we again? Sons of God. Because um, it's quite a long email, I can't see it. Does okay. the scripture anywhere use the term sons of God rather than angels? Right. I'm sure there must be. Yeah. So, somebody else can answer that. There's one. always the danger. They, they yeah. can. Uh, yeah. the, the, you know, not having Derek Walker with us. Right. But the thing angel, is, that, w was there not a gathering at one time where the, all the angelic creatures came together? And there was a gathering of the sons of God, or were they just termed that in the angelic realm? Anyway, that's Job, probably. I, I think Susan, I mean, to answer it, there. Well, there Susan is, might know the answer. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that might make it easier. Yeah. Um, so this is from Brian. Um, I've, got, I've got that scripture okay, go you for, asked go about. Brian, you've given us one of those very detailed um, word. Okay. Uh, it was Romans 11, chapter 6, Five was it? And six. Five, Five and 6. Uh, let me read it from the verse before. But what is the divine response to him? I have kept my, uh, for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. And in the same way then, there has also come to be the present time a remnant according to God's gracious choice. But if it's by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. That's probably what he's getting at. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. But then what Israel is seeking it has not obtained, but those who were chosen obtained it, and the rest were hardened. And God gave them over to a spirit uh, of stupor. It's quite deep, that one, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's very deep. And if you really want it deep, I've been getting these emails. I, I don't know how I suddenly started appearing, these emails, from the Martin Lloyd-Jones Trust. And would you believe they are on chapter 11? Yeah. 
And it's wow. literally half a verse or half a word at a time for a half an hour or wow. hour sermon. So there's a lot in there which we won't cover tonight. Yeah. But the thing is that it was all to do with Israel, really, and basically they're, they're, they would be blind to what happened uh, through when Christ came on the earth yeah. and the religious leaders just missed him. They totally um, gave him such a hard time because they thought he was coming to destroy the law, but in actual yeah. fact he was coming to fulfil it. Yeah. And what Romans 11 says, that was all part of God's plan that they would be yeah. hardened so that salvation would come to the Gentiles like you yes. and me. Yeah. And that's the most amazing dovetail in the scripture, apart from the messianic yeah. prophecies. Because we might not have got it. Because yeah. Jesus' whole purpose was he came for, for the lost sheep of Israel. So yeah. for him to, uh, and he is the word, and the word is all wrapped up in what we're reading. You know, some people say, oh, you know, what, what was it? Uh, where does it say that? God, Jesus is the Word, it's in John, isn't it? That's right. The Big Gospel time. of John, right in the beginning. He was the Word. And a couple of verses yeah. down, it says, he came to his own, the mm. Jewish people, yeah. and his own did not receive him, but to all who received him, to those who believed on his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That's us. Yeah. But that would never have happened unless the Jewish people had not had received rejected. him. Right, exactly. So it's a but wonderful It's only for a period tale. of time. This Correct. is what people misunderstand. That's why it starts off, Paul says, did God reject his people? No, he By didn't. No, means. Correct. no. Correct. but he does admit that they, they were blinded to who the Messiah is. Exactly. Um, and only for a period of time. And then we are grafted in, um, but then he gives us a warning, which I, I think is right, to yeah. the church. We could be broken off as we well. We could be broken off. Don't become arrogant. Don't think you've replaced the, ch the, right. the Jews. Yeah, and so Oof. it is, you know, hardness has befallen Israel until... Till the full number of the Gentiles come in. In other words, the until is very clear. And the Lord said, Jerusalem will be trodden down at the foot of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. In other words, an until tells you that it's time limited. Yeah, Just picking there up on you what go. You're saying. I like it. Yeah, well done. Okay, let's try and read a few more. Um, <coughs> uh, John writes, Les Feldick on another channel is currently in the book of James through the Bible with Les Feldick. He explains the difference betwixt James and Paul. Very interesting, John writes. Oh, right. I'm sure it is. Elijah went up in a chariot of fire. If Jesus ascended bodily, where did his body go? If we are given new bodies, where will we go? We will be transported to heaven. Mm -hmm. Deb says, a planet. The twinkling of an eye. Planet. Um, Can I just uh, say the parallels to, are unbelievable. To our viewers, the reason that we were doing this tonight is because we had a, a problem with our technical aspect and side that we couldn't do what we planned to do. So God had another plan. Yeah, <laughs> another plan. All knew it. Uh, but we're just here shooting the breeze uh, and talking about dovetails and how they were used in carpentry, masonry work, and also... And it all holds together with a dovetail. The Word of God is a dovetails together from beginning to end. Yeah. Like a big jigsaw puzzle. That's the way I used to put it to myself. I, I couldn't understand this bit and this bit. I couldn't see where the dovetail was. But then eventually when I got a bigger picture and I read more and more and I whole, the whole Bible, you need to read the whole Bible. If, if we were all together right now, and well, you, God can see you. How many of us have read the Bible all the way through from beginning to end? How many? Uh, can't see, how many? I can't see the people with raising no. their hands. But. but it's one thing we need to do. Then you, you're fully equipped for every good work and you can then um, speak out and defend those who speak against the word of God, providing you know you're not just wiping the dust off your feet, because some people don't you know Barry sow your... Maguire, the, the singer um, who came to know the Lord, he came into a group, it, it was the Jesus movement really in, mm. in California. They read the Bible every month, all through. This group that he was with, every month, wow. read the whole thing. Yeah. That's scary. You read it on an undertone, day and night, scary. so that the man of God, a woman of God, may be fully competent and equipped for every good work. Excellent. And that is in Timothy. That's in Timothy. Chapter yeah. 3. Timotheus. Second Timothy. Timotheus means, you know, oh, yeah, what is loves it? God. There you go. Oh, so I like that as a name. Named, weren't you? I like that as a name. By the way... Um, are, you, are you first or second? Six. Timothy. I oh, know, I'm number Sorry, six mate. in my family. Yeah. Which my dad didn't like at all. No, 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 I know, I'm joking, you, you, I'm pulling, we're on, pulling each other's legs yeah, and we are, we're right. becoming oh, yeah. legless. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So um, another one, which isn't in, in this email from Deb, it, Jonah, the parallel of Jonah and Jesus is fascinating. Mm. You know, going down, he went down to Jaffa. He went, he went down into the boat. He went down into the water, you know. And then, Je and then he basically was in the belly of the fish. For three days. Um, for three days. And the Lord Jesus says, I won't give you any sign other than the sign of Jonah. Jonah. And the Lord Jesus' life was almost a, mm. a complete parallel, as many others were. Genesis 35, 18, Rosemary says, And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she, Rachel, died, that she called his name Ben. ben Oni but his father called him Benjamin. Um, by the way, Benjamin means son of my right hand. Yeah, that was his favorite wife, wasn't it? Very much so. Yeah, and he, lost her. he didn't want the child to carry that name, Benomi, which is- He worked 14 pain, wasn't years wasn't for her. Yeah. yeah. He didn't want her, the child to carry that name. Yeah. 14 years yeah. had. Amazing story. Uh, the Bible says that's why she's buried separately to the patriarchs because she died before they even went down into Egypt. Um, Ernie says the Bible said that Jesus gave up the ghost. Does this mean that someone who is terminally ill can do this without waiting for the illness to kill them? Uh, I don't know. Well, look, look, that's an interesting point because I always think about um, when you've got these talking about euthanasia and things like that and terminating someone who's in their last days or whatever, um, ending their life, is that the patriarchs always sort of knew when they were gonna go. That's right. And they would call the family together, he, he would give the, the blessing to the sons and, and possibly to the daughters as well, yeah. but it was always the handing over uh, from the patriarch to the next uh, in line. And, and, and then he said, he put up his feet, crossed his legs, more or less, I might be adding to that, and just put his hands together and just That's right. ended life. That's especially How did that happen? Well, I, I know my mum's father up in Barrow and Furness, Robert Fenton, wasn't a believer until right up, even though mum had come to the Lord through Billy Graham at Harringay, Eddie, sorry about that. <laughs> but um, Robert Fenton, he wasn't a believer, but then right at the end of his life, he gave his heart to the Lord and he asked the Lord to take him home. And he Just went, like that. He went, he went away. But that reminds me that the same sort of thing happened uh, with Barry Smith. Barry Smith was about, he, he made so many trips all the way from New Zealand to here. And he said he, he had like several heart um, problems and he had bypasses and things like that and there was this time he was on this trip and he was due to come to do an interview with me again the following day and this was he was taken into hospital he wasn't feeling well he got into he obviously was in the bed and uh, the pastor apparently that was with him at the time um you know he was saying he said uh, well he got out of the bed and he packed his case and the pastor said oh what are you doing you know you're supposed to be in hospital he said no i'm going home and he thought he was packing his bags and he was going to leave the yeah. hospital and go back to New Zealand. And he just got back into bed and just said, I'm going home and passed away. I know, it's lovely. So another one of those that knew exactly what he was doing and quite happy to go. Yeah. And I used the term, uh, uh, I was actually, funnily enough, just after my dad died, I was in the timber merchants down in Ramsgate. And the chap there was a most foul mouthed character, you could imagine, but he, I, he suddenly became open when, when, I, when I said that my, my dad's just gone home to be with the Lord. Wow, said, it touched him. Wow, I've never, never heard that. that expression. Yeah. And it opened him up completely. I had a completely wow. different relationship with wow. him after that. Uh, First time I went in there. Respect there, you see, but, uh, or, uh, you know, yeah. for, for the Lord, really. Yeah, yeah it's wonderful. Oh, I love it. And Paul and Ruth say, thanks uh, for dovetail in the Bible. Oh, thanks, something. Dovetail in the Bible is the connection with all scripture. The tree in Eden, the ark of wood, the ark of the covenant, wood is spoken about so much in scripture. Acacia is a marvelous wood that is used through God's direction. Mm. It is a very, very good at rejuvenating itself through hard cutting. Oh, uh, would that was used in the temple a lot, very probably. Interested. Very interested in that. Um, and then, well, the trees from Lebanon, weren't they the ones that Solomon used and did trading yeah. with the, one of the, the kings of there? Lebanon. Yeah, the cedars, that's it. Yeah. 
Yeah. So a cedar tree must have a certain quality in it that's used for building. By the way, you just building. mentioned cedar. I was just going to say that at Mogahanga Park, they're going to rename the ministry the Oaks uh, it, it, as a, a parallel to a ministry in Washington with a big house, country house, it's dedicated to the Lord called the Cedars. And I was just going to say that before you started well, talking oh, wow. about the cedar tree. Wow. Which is another interesting thing that the happens. The cedars of Lebanon. When we talk about God's word, um, the flood got rid of the Nephilim, uh, but they became disembodied spirits, and this is how they still try to get into a body today. Derek Prince mm. teaches on this, Melvin writes. Yeah. So Susan, Good there point. may be something you could find out uh, in D Derek Prince's writings on that. Well, it's borne out with what Christ experienced with the demoniacs mm. uh, there. And he, because they said to him, they even recognized him. They said, what are you doing here? You know, you, uh, your times, you've come too early more or less, you know. Throw us out of uh, what, what it is, the demoniac, and put us into that swine. Um, Howard, I mentioned Robert Fenton, okay? Yeah, go. So I've got a text that's come in that just says, from Robert. Oh. That's all it says. Yeah. Oh, wow. It was written before I no. started talking. Yeah, absolutely. So in other words, you know, that we... That dovetailed very nicely. We, yeah, we are we're sort of fearfully and wonderfully made. And that's all you can say. Yeah. And we're spirit, soul, and body. Yeah. And hopefully we're led of the spirit. And so tonight's program that was planned was not meant to be. Um, and we thank God that things went wrong. We won't be having an ending as we didn't have a beginning. Mm -hmm. But what we do have is the Lord who wants to enlighten everyone as to what the future holds. And we have the most amazing stories. Uh, that we can actually help you to have faith that what's going to happen in the future, that God's plan and purpose for mankind is right there in the scriptures. So hang in there. Do not despair because God is in control. Thank you, Timothy. Thank you. And thank you to all at home. And thank you, Nathan.